But normally, if you are a good lifter, you could lift more weight during the split jerk because the bar has to displace less. Then it's followed by the push jerk and followed by the push press. If you are a good lifter, percentages should be being the split jerk 100% of your maximum performance. Then the push jerk is about 95% and the push press is about 88% of your maximum split jerk. Hi, Marcos. Welcome to Evidence Strong Show. It's my pleasure to have you. If you could briefly introduce yourself. Hi, Alex. Thank you for the, for the invitation. I'm very happy to be here. Well, my name is Marco Soriano. I'm a, uh, I got a PhD in sports science. I did my doctoral stay at the University of Salford where I had the opportunity to meet uh, Dr. Paul Comfort, John Mamaon, and all the guys from, from that university. And well, my doctoral thesis is about uh, how to implement weightlifting exercises in sport performance or for athletic performance. However, once you get into weightlifting, you, you fall in love with weightlifting. <laughs> So let's say at the same time with my PhD, I started doing weightlifting myself and I also compete in weightlifting. I'm a national weightlifting coach here in Spain and I also collaborate with the National Weightlifting Federation in, in Spain. I'm one of these lecturers that teach other uh, trainers or the new weightlifting trainers in, in Spain. I'm also a senior lecturer in Camilo Jose Fela University in Madrid. And I'm the program leader of a master in strength training and neuromuscular performance. So my research line is about the strength training and how to implement different methods to, to increase neuromuscular performance, to improve neuromuscular performance. But specifically, what I really love is weightlifting. That's plenty. So I invited you because you have published two papers looking specifically at overhead movements and yes. jerk and upper and lower body strength and how they compare and correlate to weightlifting performance in split jerk specifically. So the paper we'll be talking about is called How Does Lower Body and Upper Body Strength Relate to Maximum Split jerk performance you but, but you also you also published a paper on comparison of 1rm performance across push press push jerk and split jerk um so maybe we will start with overhead exercises and i will ask you how they relate to each other and what you can tell us about them nice i will start from the beginning if you like well my, as I told you, uh, my doctoral thesis is about uh, how to implement weightlifting exercises for sport performance, but specifically, I focus on the overhead pressing derivatives, and I'll tell you why. So I used to read, well, I still read a lot of papers from Dr. Paul Comfort and Timothy Sukomel and, well, Mike Stone, Cian Chafta, but... I realized at that time that there were many papers about weightlifting, pulling and catching derivatives, and there was little focus on weightlifting overhead pressing derivatives. So let's say that my email to Paul Comfort at that time was, why nobody has studied this? There, there are few papers about this. And then we published this review in sports medicine about the weightlifting overhead pressing derivatives. And it's more related to general sport performance than weightlifters. But after that, I realized how important the overhead pressing derivatives were also for, for weightlifters, right? Because, well, as you can see in many competitions, I think that we all agree that the snatch is the most, probably the most complex exercise in weightlifting. However, in the clean and jerk, there are more failures in the jerk, probably because you accumulate the fatigue from, from the clean, but also because the jerk is, is a difficult movement itself and it has to be trained Properly. So we started with this project, knowing more about the kinetics, kinematics, and also the one performance between weightlifting overhead pressing derivatives. 
what we realized at that time that the, the three exercises commonly implemented as weight lifting overhead pressing derivatives were the push press, the push jerk, and also the split jerk. As we all know, the push jerk and the split jerk is uh, to the, the weight lifter. So he or she might choose which one to perform in competitions. And the push press is more like an assistant exercise just to improve your dip, your thrust, and everything. So first of all, was to, to know what was the difference between the push press, push jerk, and the speed jerk in terms of one arm performance. So in which exercise can I lift more loads? Normally, because well, as we know, there are outliers, but normally if you are a good lifter, you could lift more weight during the split jerk because the bar has to displace less. Then it's followed by the push jerk and followed by the push press. If you are a good lifter or if you are a, a weak lifter, so the percentages should be being the split jerk a hundred percent of your maximum performance. I'm talking about PGs, so how much PGs you lift. Then the push jerk is about 95%, something like that. And the push press is about 88% of your maximum split jerk. So the point at that time was, okay, this is correct for weight lifters because they are skillful lifters. So they train these lifts on a daily basis and they got like technical mastery. However, does it happen in other populations? And then that's why we compare not only the differences between exercises for weightlifters, but also we implement CrossFit athletes and also, let's say, a group of general sporting population. I remember some of them, they were rugby players, or they, they did swimming, or uh, they were volleyball players, football players. But all of them were competent at performing these exercises. We clearly saw how weightlifters could differentiate better between exercises. For example, for the CrossFit and also for the general sporting population, it was quite similar in terms of the one-arm performance to, to perform a push jerk or a split jerk because they were not as skillful as the weightlifters doing that. And well, that is, let's say, talking about the differences between exercises and also your technical level, your technical mastery to differentiate between them. And then after that, we started working with uh, weightlifters and how to, to improve them. So in my class, uh, we were training and I remember one friend, one of my work mates, my, my teammates, uh, he was doing some jerks and he was trying to be class classified for the national championship. He was very good. He actually has a 130 kg in a snatch. And uh, well, the clean and jerk was 145, which was less than the minimum to get classified. And we saw that the problem was not the clean, the problem was the jerk. And we tried basically to deduce why the jerk was so bad. So we started doing a lot of jerks, 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 jerk technique, jerk technique. But there was one day when we were doing some presses some overhead presses, and I realized that my clean and jerk, for example, is only 130 kgs. And I realized that this guy, that he is able to lift 145, so he is stronger than me, he could only lift in the overhead press 75 kgs, which is quite less than me that, for example, I can lift 85 kgs. And then I said, I think something is wrong. I don't know in other countries, but in Spain, we are, let's say, more technically oriented. So he was training the jerk technique once and again and again and again. And the problem at that time, in my opinion, it wasn't the, the jerk technique. Actually, the jerk technique was quite good. It was that he had 
had a deficit on the overhead press. So I just told them, okay, do your training as you are doing it. And now I will implement two times per week overhead pressing following this periodization. And well, he improved his press from 75 kgs to 90 kgs in 10 weeks. In Yeah, in 10 weeks. And he got 155 in a year. So he got qualified and he actually got a bronze medal in the national championship. So at that time, for that specific guy, we realized that the overhead press strength was really important for the gel. Of course, I'm not saying that the overhead press strength is more important than your drive, than your legs. Of course, the jerk is a movement that you live with your legs. However, your upper body is important, especially because you are holding the barbell overhead. So you need to be strong to be able to keep up with that position so after that i decided to to do like a, a research study with uh, the rest of my teammates and also some other weightlifters here in madrid and that's why we published that paper <laughs> that's a great story um yeah it is question uh how did you go about training overhead press so you you have written 10 week program twice a week and what the athlete did well it was quite simple it was uh, let's say a um, linear periodization a linear programming so we started with a uh, high volume less intensity and then we progressed to higher intensity less volume so it was quite 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 simple because he only needed to improve his press so he had a really high deficit so the deficit was clear so something very very simple very basic could improve him and well uh, we also did the same for the rest of our uh, our teammates and i actually wanted to publish uh, a paper about this but well it went wrong and i will explain you why my teammates started doing this kind of a study but of course there was an experimental group and a control group so the control group started like realizing that the mates from the experimental group were improving not only in the overhead press but also in the jerk so these guys started training the press so it was like you are no longer in a control group so that's why my my study failed but let's say that uh, they realize how important it was to to also train your upper body for uh, improving your performance especially during the split jerk that's why well uh, i didn't get angry at all it was just well it is what it is right but well it was nice it was actually nice to to see all my teammates improving and, and this stuff <laughs> that's amazing so, so you didn't stop there so you wanted to know exactly what is the influence of upper body strength and lower body strength on split jerk performance and could we could we talk a little bit about that yeah like uh, well after this we started doing first it was a, a study that was published in uh, international journal of sports science and coaching i really like that journal because it's a, a coach friendly journal and it's very straight to the point so well there were i think at that time there were 61 men and 22 women it was really good because we also could get women and uh, in our studies great because my weightlifting my weightlifting team I think there are more women than men so it's great that uh, well I have access to this sample I just did a simple correlation between the jerk and the overhead press and we realized that this relationship was stronger for men than for women and I remember there was one paper that Mike Stone published at that time and that he saw that women normally had lower relative strength levels in the upper body so well i wanted just to to see this relationship and effectively uh, the men were more correlated to the overhead press for a split jerk performance so after that once we published that paper i said i need a more clear picture or a more complete picture of this so i need to know how the lower body strength also influence the split jerk. I have discussed this 
with uh, some people. I'm not saying that um, I'm going to test my 1RM during the squat and then when my 1RM during the, the overhead press to get my split jerk. No, for that, it's better to get the split jerk directly, right? Yes. But those are good tools in terms of knowing how important it is to be strong for weightlifters. Because it is not only important that you train your legs, because if you see any weightlifting program, you will see, I don't know, snatch or power snatch, then clean, then uh, push press or clean and jerk. And then you will see front squat, back squat, you know, like, of course, you will see, let's say, the, the basic leg exercises. However, sometimes we forget that the upper body is also important. And that's why we, we completed a second study. This time they were only weightlifters because in this first one there were more athletes rather than only weightlifters and in this one we got 20 weightlifters 20 male and 13 women so what we saw at that time was that also the upper body strength and the lower body strength was important for both men and women so our recommendation, more than use this equation or recreation equation to know your split jerk, which can be okay if you want to have, let's say, a point, you know, like a, some reference, a reference point, but it's very useful in terms of knowing that maybe you need to train more your upper body or maybe you need to train more your lower body or just have a balance between upper and lower body strain exercises. Okay, so I have a question about it. The equation is pretty clear. There is a number at the beginning, and then you have a factor for back squat and factor for overhead press, and you sum yes. and you get your predicted one RM of flip jack. Now, when you will plug in back squat and overhead press numbers, and then you get your jerk and you compare it to your real maximal and uh, one RM split jerk, how will you then deduce whether you are lacking in lower body strength or upper body strength? That's a good question, actually. You could play with numbers on Excel, just increasing once or well, increasing the ones from the back squat or increasing the ones from the overhead press. And also you should, as a strength and conditioning coach or as a weightlifting coach, know in what exercise you've got more potential to improve. Because, well, maybe you've, let's say, you've got a lot of potential on the overhead press because there are some people that they are very strong. However, you need to train more your back squat, you need to train more your squats and it might help you to improve your gear. For example, it is quite common to see in women, especially in women, that they are weaker in the upper body than in the lower body. So for women, maybe not only implementing overhead press, but any exercise for improving the upper body, like triceps, biceps, overhead press, so whatever, it could be adequate to improve your gear. Of course, I want to say that it has to be appropriately programmed in a training periodization. So I'm not saying that you need to train your upper body with these complementary exercises or with these uh, assistant exercises for the whole season. So there are periods where you can implement these kind of exercises and you need to make sure that you create a strong base and then after that, of course, the, the best way to improve your jerk is to perform jerks. So that's, that's, that's the truth. But we can, as a strength and conditioning coaches or as a weightlifting coaches, we have also more training tools and we need to be aware of those. So that's why we, we perform these kind of studies and it helps us and well uh, i hope that more people can use these uh, papers and this information to to improve their their trainings okay so i think you laid out pretty clear what is the importance of overhead strength could you speak a little bit more about lower body strength and its importance for specifically for split jerk 
it's obvious for clean because you have to stand it up. So you catch it low, you have to stand it up. It's obvious why um, back squat strength is important, but I think it's a little bit less intuitive for split jerk. So could you elaborate on that? Well, there are important papers talking about this. I know that uh, Dr. Mike Stone published a paper, I think it was in 2003. It's called The Importance of Maximal Strength in Weightlifting Performance and Stabilidad. And also there is recently a paper from Arthur Thekin, Association Between Foundation Strength and Weightlifting Exercises in Highly Trained Weightlifters. I actually, I did review that paper. I really like it and I really enjoy reviewing that paper because it uh, it basically says that a weightlifter to perform well in the two lifts, the snatch and the clean and jerk, he or she needs to be strong and especially needs to be strong in the lower body. So take into account that, for example, a jerk, you have got a dip and a thrust. So you need to drive and to transmit all the force to the barbell. You need to perform mechanical work. So you need to be strong because you will give like uh, all of this to the barbell. You will transmit all of this energy to the barbell just to rise its height. So, of course, for the jerk, for the snatch, for the clean, the lower body is the most important, well, the most important component in terms of how strong you need to be. That's why weightlifters, they are really strong in the, in the lower body. But as I, as I said before, the, the upper body is also important to work on, right? And of course, strength is the ability to apply force. But force is a vectorial magnitude. So it has direction, it has point of application, it also has a magnitude. So you need to apply your vectors, your force, force vectors adequately. That's why we train our technique and that's why we need to apply the force appropriately in consistencies depending on your anthropometrics and all of this. So we need to, I don't know how to explain it, but first it could be a work on semantics just to, to put all the definitions that the different manuals and uh, papers have done for the different phases first pull, transition, second pull, even some of them, they say there is a third pull and also to find a way to, uh, let's say, have a similar factor for everyone. I don't know if it could be just looking at the barbell kinetics and kinematics or something like that. And instead of defining the faces, depending on the angles of the knee or the hip, just defining the faces, depending on the kinetics or kinematics of the barbell, we'll see that in the future. But I think it's a fascinating research line. And uh, what well, this student of, my, of mine uh, talked to me about the, that idea. And I think it was great. And for sure, we will enjoy a lot in the future. Well, we'll be we'll be waiting for the outcomes. So what, uh, when we started this conversation, you mentioned that the jerk should be trained properly. What did you mean? Well, what I meant with uh, with that it was that you won't improve your jerk your jerk by doing back squat and overhead press. So you will improve your jerk if you do exercises or, or technically oriented for the jerk. So you need to perform split jerks, you need to perform, well, I don't know the specific name in, in English, but well, you need to perform exercises to improve your dip, to improve your drive, and to improve all of these phases of the, of the split jerks. So that's, where, that's my main point. So nobody has to misunderstand the, the paper. So the paper just says that uh, for the split jerks, uh, important both your upper and your lower body but you want to improve your jerk for just doing more back squat and more overhead press so what you need to to work on is on your split jerk for sure 
So that's why when I explained this uh, case with my teammate, he was doing split jerks and he he actually got a good split jerk. He, he is good technically. So he needed to be stronger, just like that. So that's why we uh, we lifting coaches and when we are in training on a daily basis, we need to observe and we need to make judgments about uh, what's happening in each moment and how I can implement different stimulus to improve my weightlifting performance. And that's what I said, or that's what I meant. Okay, thank you. What is your favorite color? My favorite color? Uh, good question. <laughs> I would say navy seal, maybe navy seal blue. I think it is maybe blue. Yeah. Okay, noted. I actually made an infographic from your study, and I think it's navy blue, red, and gray. So pretty clear. All right. Um, where people can find you if they want to contact you or learn more about your research or follow what you're what you're doing? Where should they go? Well, they can follow me on Instagram. Is uh, M A Soriano nineteen ninety one. I'm also on Twitter, is Marcos Soriano. Uh, um, well, they can drop me an email at any time. If uh, they read one of these papers, my email is there as uh, a corresponding author. And I will be happy to respond to any weightlifting coach that has any doubt about that or any weightlifter that uh, just uh, has well, some doubts about these papers specifically. But if they have also, or if they want to chat about a, a general idea of weightlifting or a, a more general concept, so for me it would be great because I think that most of uh, our research questions should be taken from the practice. So if uh, some coach comes to me and say, look, I have this problem, what can I do? Sometimes I might apply an inductive answer but sometimes I would have to say, well, we need to study this because I can't say that. Uh, I don't know. And I think it's great that uh, sometimes uh, the, the answer is basically, I don't know. And that's why science is there, just to, to make us easier to discover new, new, new questions and to discover new answers and uh, well, just to, to improve uh, the way that uh, we train. Yeah, that's the exciting part. Yes, it is. Thank you so much, Marcos, for your time today and for your knowledge and sharing it with Aidan Strong. Thank you. Thank you, Alice. It has been great. And well, thank you for the invitation.